Well, hindsight is 2020. I can think of other words to describe last year. But what have we learned from the second wave of COVID-19? We're joined now by a journalist at the Becker Sisa Center for Health Journalism, Mahale Malloy. Mahale, good afternoon to you. Scientists do say we're likely to see more variants, new variants emerge. How do we make sure we're equipped to identify them quickly? Hi, Stephen. Thank you for having me. We can identify these new variants more quickly by investing in the processes that already allow us to identify them in the first place. So that refers to getting more uh, samples of people who have been positive with COVID and putting them through this process, which essentially unravels the virus, allowing scientists to gain more data about it, about its structure and how it behaves. That way we can answer more of the unknown questions that we have about COVID-19. I mean, I presume finding these variants is really important in terms of shaping policy decisions. If we don't know what we're dealing with, we can't actually respond. That's true. That's true. And we've seen it just recently with the AstraZeneca vaccine, how, how crucial having information about a virus can be. So in that case, we then we, because we have done more uh, unraveling of this virus, we're able to un understand that we get more information about it. And with the 501YV2, we've now been able to understand that they can actually, the, the, the efficacy of vaccines can actually change. So what we, we, what we learned from do, putting our virus samples through these processes is actually invaluable. That's why we are now starting with a more effective Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Um, I mean, so the vaccine, finally happening in South Africa. We've seen the first batch already. We're seeing the second batch arriving over the weekend. Do we need to worry about another wave? And I know so many people say this, that the second wave is the worst and there are always three waves. Well, yeah, that is one of the concerns that uh, public health researchers have actually voiced to me is that people sort of feel that once we have a vaccine, we have an answer to all of our problems. That's just not actually true. Uh, our masks are going to be with us for a long time. We're going to have to keep away from each other for a long time. And we're going to have to keep sanitizing just because we aren't actually sure if the vaccine stops us from spreading COVID. So while you may have uh, gotten a jab to protect you from the severe cases of the disease, we don't know yet whether or not the vaccine will actually stop you from spreading it. It seems the science is also very complicated about which vaccines work against which variant. As we found out, not all vaccines work against the variant that's currently dominant in this country. If the virus mutates again, we might find vaccines that currently are working against both variants don't work against a third or fourth variant. And, th and that's the point that scientists are trying to make right now, Stephen, is that we need to keep our transmission rates as low as possible. Limiting the spread of the virus means that we give it fewer chances to actually evolve and change uh, in, into uh, how, uh, sorry, fight our immune, our re immune response. More. So we need to lower transmissions now. And uh, the report just before this conversation indicated how you know, COVID-19 cases are quite low in the country. But this is the situation we were in when uh, the, the second wave actually started. Uh, we had a very amount, low amount of daily cases at the time. And what happened is uh, a new variant popped up without sort of flying under the radar. Well, Hale Molloy, thanks very much indeed. A journalist at the Baker Cesar Center for Health Journalism. Do appreciate it.